peace be with you. Friends, if you've watched our videos before, you'll notice that I'm in a different location than normal for this video. And you'll soon notice that our format for online worship is a bit different today and for the next few weeks. I'm recording these videos in advance of my summer break and they're going to be a bit shorter and simpler than our regular videos. We'll return to our usual format in mid-August. But for now, I want to offer each week the gospel lesson appointed, followed by a short excerpt from the commentaries of some wonderful minds of the church, the fathers and doctors of the church, those indispensable ancient voices that God inspired to open up our understanding of the scriptures and even to this present day have great influence on the way that we hear God's word in God's holy church. We'll then say the Lord's Prayer and ask for God's blessing. If you're looking for a live streamed worship service, there's a link to the diocesan YouTube page in the video description below. And you can tune in to worship from our cathedral church each Sunday at 11 a.m. You'll also find our parish website linked there. And if these online offerings are a blessing to you, we ask you to consider making a gift to support our mission and ministry. And we thank you for all of your generosity. Let's hear now the gospel appointed from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And friends, our reading today is from a homily by the Venerable Bede, a historian and doctor of the church who died in the year 735 and was undoubtedly the most learned churchman of his time. He says, Our Lord and Savior wishes us to attain the joy of the heavenly kingdom. And so he taught us to pray for it promising to give it to us if we did so. Ask, he said, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. We should consider most seriously and attentively what these words of the Lord may mean for us. For they warn that not the idle and feckless, but those who ask, seek, and knock will receive find and have the door open to them. We must therefore ask for entry into the kingdom by prayer, 
Seek it by upright living and knock at its door by perseverance. Merely to ask verbally is not enough. We must also diligently seek to discover how to live so as to be worthy of obtaining what we ask for. We know this from our Savior's words. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my heavenly Father. There is a need then for constant and unflagging prayer. Let us fall upon our knees with tears before our God and maker. And that we may deserve a hearing, let us consider carefully how he who made us wishes us to live and what he has commanded us to do. Let us seek the Lord and his strength. Let us constantly seek his face. And in order to become worthy of finding him and gazing upon him, let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of body and spirit. For only the chaste of body can be raised up to heaven on the day of resurrection. Only the pure of heart can contemplate the glory of the divine majesty. If we would know what the Lord wishes us to ask for, let us listen to the gospel text. Seek first the kingdom of God and its justice, and all these other things will be given to you as well. To seek the kingdom of God and its justice is to long for the graces of our heavenly homeland and to give constant thought to the kind of upright living that will deserve to obtain them. For should we chance to stray from the path that leads there, we shall never be able to reach our goal. To ask God for the justice of his kingdom is to ask principally for faith, hope, and love. These virtues above all we should strive to obtain. For scripture says, the upright live by faith, Mercy surrounds those who hope in the Lord. And to love is to fulfill the law, for the whole law is summed up in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so the Lord graciously promises that the Father will give the good spirit to those who ask him, in order to show that those who of themselves are evil can become good by receiving the grace of the spirit. He promises the good spirit will be given by the Father because whether it is faith, hope, or any other virtue we desire to obtain, we shall do so only through the grace of the Holy Spirit. As we do our best then to follow in our Lord's footsteps, let us ask God the Father for the grace of his spirit to lead us along the path of that true faith which works through love and that we may deserve to obtain our desire, let us strive to live in a way that will make us not unworthy of so great a father. Let us preserve inviolate in body and soul the sacramental rebirth of our baptism, which made us children of God. Then, if we keep the Almighty Father's commandments, he will certainly reward us with the eternal blessing, which from the beginning he prepared as our heritage through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with the Holy Spirit lives and reigns with him, God forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God for the wisdom of the venerable Bede. And now friends, with confidence and trust, let us pray in the words that our Savior Christ has taught us, saying together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, 
The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.